Uh, today I'm going to, going to talk, talk about engineering as a career. And I'll try to summarize uh, what qualities do you need to become an engineer. And if you do decide to become an engineer, how is it like to work as an engineer? So what is the definition of engineering? I did a Google search for definitions and uh, I found this one that I like the most about engineering. So based on Merriam-Webster dictionary, engineering is the application of science and mathematics by which the properties of matter and the sources of energy in nature are made useful to people. So this is the definition, but uh, what does it exactly mean? A few years ago, they made this movie uh, called Iron Man, which was about this fictional engineer. I had this same presentation yesterday, and I asked the audience how, how many of the audience have, had seen the movie, and pretty much everyone had seen the movie. So I would like to know, is there anyone in the audience who hasn't seen the movie? Can you raise your hand? Okay, so we have, we have actually a few today. So can anyone? from the audience who has seen the movie, summarize the movie for those who haven't seen it? Can anyone volunteer? Anyone wants to tell the story of the movie? Very short summary. Okay, so I'll, I'll summarize it. So basically the movie is about this engineer who makes this robotic suit that gives him uh, superpowers and then uh, he uses the suit to uh, fight criminals and terrorists. So this is an example of an engineer in the sense that uh, this guy uses science and mathematics uh, to create new products, right, that are useful to him. But he is not a very good example of an engineer because uh, normally, uh, projects of this complexity are done by uh, big groups of people. So if, if you're working on a project like this, probably you're working with a team. So you can't, I mean, it's not really realistic to think that you can do uh, a big project all by yourself. So uh, let me give you a very, very simple example of an engineering design. So let's say, uh, there is this a small river uh, near your house and you want to make a bridge so that you can cross the river. And all you have are, all you have is pieces of wood. So the only thing that you can decide about uh, those pieces of wood is how thick of a wood you need to use. So this is an example of an engineering design. So anyone from the audience has any idea how to approach this problem? Please raise your hand, anybody? Okay, uh, what's your answer? Mark. Okay, so what Mark just said is you need to first of all know how wide is the distance and you need to know the properties of the wood that you're going to use, which is correct. So actually in a real design you need to consider many factors, but these are two of the most important ones. Uh, so. The first step would be, as Mark said, to learn about the properties of your uh, wood. So maybe you can ask one of your friends to test it for you, and let's say your friend tested the wood for you, and he said, okay, he tested one piece, and he realized that if the piece of wood is one inch thick, it can carry about 100 pounds. And he tested the same piece with 120, and he reported to you that with 120 pounds, it breaks down. So now you have some ideas about uh, the properties of the wood that you're using. So what would be the next step in the design? Go ahead. Yeah, that's, uh, what's your name, sir? Patrick. Patrick, okay. So, yeah. One important decision is you need to uh, check whether you have enough wood to see if you can cover the area. Or are you trying to make a thicker bridge? Or maybe making the structure stronger? 
Okay, sure, yeah. If, if you need to load the bridge uh, even more, you need to use uh, thicker, thicker pieces of wood. That is correct. So basically, based on uh, what Patrick and Mark just said, you need to uh, revise your uh, design and use thicker pieces of wood, and also you need to uh, know what are, the, what are the conditions in your designs, what are the co operating conditions. So, uh, obviously you want to cross, uh, obviously you want to be able to cross the river uh, using your bridge, right? So, uh, if, you, if you weigh 150 pounds, this bridge has to be able to carry your weight, right? So, obviously that uh, one inch thick uh, piece of wood wouldn't do the job, right? But you may also want to cross the bridge with your friends, right? And let's say you have this football, very, football player friend who weighs 250 pounds. And sometimes you want to cross the uh, bridge with your friend at the same time. So your bridge in worst case conditions might be loaded to 400 pounds. So this kind of gives you an idea about uh, uh, how much loading you get on your bridge and based on what Mark said, uh, you probably need to adjust the thickness so that you can carry this much load. So the third step would be, so now you know the properties of the wood, you know uh, the loading of the wood. So the third step would be to use simple mass to calculate how, much, how, how, how thick of a wood you need for uh, your bridge. And if you really want to simplify the calculations, probably one inch uh, thick uh, wood can carry 100 pounds. Probably four inch thick wood will be able to carry uh, you and your friend. Obviously, this is a very simpli simplified uh, example. In a real bridge design, you need to consider many, many, many other factors. And obviously, you need to consider, for example, dynamic loads. These are just static loads. But the point is, uh, the principles are very similar to, uh, to real life applications. So if you have a real life design problem, you pretty much take the same steps. You need to know the uh, properties of the material that you're using. Uh, you need to know the uh, objective of that design that you're doing and what performance you're expecting from your design. And you need to use uh, mathematics to uh, basically calculate uh, do the calculations in, the, in your design based on what your requirements. And probably in real life, the calculations, the properties, all those things are more complex, but you'll use these steps. Nowadays, actually, there are four main branches of engineering that are taught in most universities. Uh, electrical, mechanical, civil, and computer engineering. Electrical engineers are the guys who are dealing with your TV, your uh, cell phone, the guys who are working on the transmission lines, uh, the guys who basically deliver electricity to this room, right? Mechanical engineers are the guys who are uh, dealing with uh, mechanical devices, the devices that have moving parts, like cars, like uh, trains, even your watch. Civil engineers are the guys who are dealing with uh, fixed structures like uh, bridges, buildings, and so on. And computer engineers are very similar to electrical engineers. They pretty much uh, uh, have the same courses, except that they have more focus on uh, computers. And they are the guys too, who design new computers. There are also other branches of engineering uh, that are taught in universities. Uh, these are interdisciplinary branches. So for example, there is aerospace engineering that is a combination of uh, mechanical and electrical engineering. And there is biomedical engineering that is a combination of medicine, electrical engineering, and mechanical engineering. So anyone from the audience has any idea that what biomedical engineers do? Uh, can, can someone give me some more examples, except for the bionic hands?
That's correct. That's correct. So they they create they make those interfaces that you have with uh, between human humans and uh, the um, and machines. And what else? Can you give me some more? Uh, when you go to doctors, uh, do can you remember some of some of the devices that you see in doctors' offices? Exactly. So these are the guys who make cardio monitors, pacemakers, X-ray devices, uh, and probably MRI, MRI systems. Thank you. So in order to become an engineer, you need to uh, go to a university and do a four-year engineering program. And here in Manitoba, uh, the only place that offers that program is University of Manitoba. You can also do a two-year engineering technology program. The difference between an engineer and an engineering technologist is that engineers are the guys who can actually design new devices. Technologists, on the other hand, they have a lot of hands-on work. So. Uh, these are the guys who help with the testing of the devices. These are the guys who help to prepare the drawings. These are the guys who uh, help with the installations. But these guys, uh, the technologists, cannot do, uh, and cannot design uh, new devices, and they cannot uh, approve their uh, performance. So let's say you do decide to become an engineer. You go to an university, and you get your degree. So how's it like to work as an engineer? This is the part that I like the most about engineering. Uh, engineering gives you flexibility at work. So I know some people might be interested to uh, work outside. They want to be on the field. So if, if you want to do that, engineering gives you that opportunity. Some people are more people-oriented. So they want to be in the meetings, they want to coordinate work, uh, they want to supervise other people. So engineering gives you that uh, option as well. And some people, they just want a quiet environment, they just want to work on a computer, they want to report every once in a while to some other people. If you want to do that, engineering it still gives you that opportunity too. So it's very flexible, I mean, depending on what you want, if you get an engineering degree, you can do all, the, all these different types of work. And also, if you decide, let's say you decide to do an office work. If you decide to do some specific type of work, it's still it, it has its own ups and downs. So for example, at Teshmon, when I go to work, uh, every project that starts with some preliminary uh, feasibility studies, uh, some data collection. So uh, at the beginning, the load is low, and then as, the, as we collect data, as we get prepared for doing the actual design, uh, the workload increases, and then once we finish with the design, we start writing reports, preparing the drawings, and so on, and again, the uh, workload decreases, and then we will have another project, and we will have another cycle. So even if you do decide to you know, do a specific, a specific type of job, it still it has ups and downs, so it would be interesting and it won't be boring. By the way, if you guys have any questions, you can ask at any time. You don't have to wait to, till the end. Salaries. Uh, yesterday I mentioned this, today I, I just want to repeat it. So salaries are not, shouldn't be the main uh, reason that you select a career. I mean, nowadays there is a lot of competition in the market. So there are a lot of com uh, engineers in Canada. There are a lot of other uh, countries that are competing with Canada. So if you just decide your career based on salary, uh, probably you won't be able to compete with other people. So first thing, the most important thing is to like what you're doing. But if you like what you're doing, I guess salaries are also important because you, won't, you, don't, you wouldn't want to work for free, right? So this is a salary survey that was uh, done by APEGEM. APEGEM is Association of Professional Engineers and Geoscientists of Manitoba, and these are the guys who basically supervise the engineering profession in uh, Manitoba. We have 
Grant here. Grant is the registrar of APEGIM in Manitoba. Please wave your hand for people who know you. So these guys basically did a survey and uh, I used the results to uh, come up with these numbers. So as an engineer, if you start your work and you get an entry level job, you're expecting to get around $40,000 a year. As you gain experience after a few years, you reach to around $60,000 and at the, when you become a senior level engineer, you're, you're probably expecting more than $100,000 a year. And that's just Manitoba. In different provinces, the salaries change, but they are pretty much in this range. And you need to notice that these are, you need to remember that these are average numbers, so they fluctuate a, li a little bit. And especially in the senior level range, it fluctuates a lot. So if you, if you, if you like what you're doing, and if you're good in what you're doing, it pays off pretty well. I, there, are, there are some uh, numbers in the survey in the order of 200, 250. So those salaries are still expected. Career advancements, how can you get promotion? So if you get a degree in engineering, when you start your work, probably you start in an engineering in training position. And what it means is that you start working with other engineers and they supervise what you're doing. And they help you with uh, whatever you're done, doing. After a few years, after you gain experience, you you will be able to do independent, independent work and you'll be uh, promoted to engineer level. Obviously, you need to pass few exams, you need to uh, go through a process, you need to be licensed, but you can get to that level after a few years. And at that point, you will be able to carry out independent work, you'll be able to supervise other people, and so on. From there, there are two different passes. If you're more people-oriented, you can uh, get into management, you can do project management, you can, do, uh, you can become a, the general manager of a company, or you can become a more technical oriented person, and you can become uh, technical leaders, you can become research scientists. So it all depends on what you want. And obviously, uh, as always, uh, training can help you to get the promotion sooner, so, for example, you can do uh, extended uh, studies, you can do master's programs, you can do PhD programs, or you can do get on-the-job trainings. And those will help you. So, uh, this slide basically concludes my uh, talk. So, this, is, this one is the one you can use as a checklist to see if, you, if, engineering, if engineering really fits uh, what you want. So you, you should consider these points. So if you want to get into engineering, these are the qualities that you need. So you need to be creative, you need to be a pro problem solver, <coughs> you need to be able to work in a team. If, if you're an engineer, it's, it rarely happens that you just work independently. Uh, you need to be good in math and science. You don't have to be a rocket scientist, but you need to understand the basic concepts. And you need to uh, be someone who enjoys new technologies. And if you do actually enjoy new technologies, uh, engineering gives you a lot of opportunities because engineers are the guys who are basically designing these new cars that come, come on the streets or these new cell phones or new computers. <coughs> 